Uh, hello, today's, uh, really, well, today's Tuesday, but this is going to go out on Wednesday, and uh, I'm glad you're uh, tuning in, watching. I hope there's a few of you watching, uh, and if you are, if you've been watching the last couple, the last week anyway, we looked at 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to do that again in just a moment. But before we do, I just want to remind you that this past Sunday, uh, the search committee for a youth pastor and the elders and I and Brian, uh, we made a recommendation uh, to the church to hire Tyler Neff to be our next youth pastor. Tyler, uh, of course, he grew up in our church, and he's my son, but uh, he's married at, uh, to Chelsea, and they have a little boy, Jones. He graduated from Liberty University with a, a business finance degree and a minor in Bible. Um, when he moved to New York, he got involved in the church, and became a, a, a volunteer youth pastor uh, for the church, and he's been heavily involved in that ministry ever since he's been there. He has a calling on his life, and so uh, with anybody who says they have a calling on their life, I want, to, I want to lean in, and I want to help them any way I can. Uh, this just so happened to be uh, Tyler. And so I ask you that you pray with me, and uh, We'll see what's, uh, what that's going to entail in a couple of weeks. We'll vote on him in, in um, a Sunday after that. Not this Sunday, next Sunday. But anyway, along with that, I want you to look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And um, beginning in verse 1, we'll read the whole chapter. So 13 only has 13 verses. So anyway, it says this, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, though I uh, could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Last week we talked about these first three verses, how that... When he opened up this chapter, when we dig in here, he doesn't hold back. He talks right up front. Here's what we're talking about. We're talking about love and, with, and the importance of love. And without love uh, being a foundation in your heart, your soul, uh, you, you, it really everything else you do is just window dressing. It's hot air. It's uh, hypocritical. Uh, what are you doing it for? And so then he then these next verses, which I want to talk about, is uh, what is love on display. It's how it's lived out. And we talked about how the chapter thirteen, how this chapter thirteen in First Corinthians is love on display, whereas Hebrews eleven uh, is faith on display. Here's how it's lived out, and he gives us all these men and women's name who who were faithful in their in their life. Uh, of, of worship uh, to, to God. So I want to uh, continue reading here in verse 4. It says, Love suffers long. Here it's on display now. This is what it looks like. And when you're going to live it out, if it's inside of you, this is what's going to come out. And people are going to know this. And uh, it, matter of fact, there's one of the verses I'll use later on over in John where it says, By this will all men know that you have love one toward another. You know? And, and so... Anyway, he says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not love its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And then the last part of this chapter, he, 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 he talks about how that it is preeminent. There's a, prophecies that will pass away, um, and the gifts, they're all going to pass away. But there's one thing that will never pass away and be all through all eternity, and that's that one word, love. Maybe we ought to talk about it just a minute in, in another light and, and describe the love that he's talking about. Uh, a lot of times this passage has been spoken of uh, in, in marriages and other situations, but here he's talking about the church and how that this ought to be evident in the church. And speaking of the church, he's talking it ought to be evident in the believer's life. 
So if you're a follower of Christ, if you are a Christian, uh, if you're a person of faith, then this ought to be evident in your life. So we've got to be careful, too, the way we use that word love. In the English language, we use love so, so many things. I love apple pie. I love the New York Yankees. I love my mom, and I love my wife, and I love my children. I love a Chevrolet truck. So all these things talk about one word, love, are they all equal? No, they're not all equal. They're all different levels. And in the Greek, he also gives us these different levels of love. And one of the words is uh, eros, and uh, that's a sensual love. It's a, really a fleshly love. And uh, then there's a, the phileo love, and that's a brotherly love. Matter of fact, we know the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. And uh, then the third love is agape love, and that's a spiritual, divine, and it's marked by a particular word I'm going to use in just a moment. But these, in, in the Greek language, they use different levels of love, but they had a word for each one. And uh, it's like what you and I would say, yeah, I like that. Uh, or I love that, you know, but the thing is we use that word love so in so many uh, instances and cases that sometimes you really have to know the context in which that word love is being used. And in the context here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he uses that agape love and that's a spiritual love. That's a divine love and it's marked by this one word, sacrificial or sacrifice, sacrifice. The love that God is talking about here is a sacrificial love. And it's really evident because how that God displayed this love himself toward us, such as John 3.16. Most familiar, we, we all know that verse. So say it, say, it, say it in your heart. For God so loved the world, what did he do? He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the sacrificial love. That he would give his son for you and me. Why? Because God so loved us. It was a sacrificial love. God's love is sacrificial. You look over in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. It says that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. We had, we had, we had no recollection of him. We did nothing to earn it. We were not craving for it. But he died on our behalf before we ever knew him. He died for us. It says this that he showed his love toward us. He proved his love and that it was a sacrificial love. Oh, in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16, it says this. By this we know love, because the Lord laid his life down for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He says, he says Look, just as you have received sacrificial love, of God in your heart, in your life, you and I also ought to be displaying that type of love one toward another. 1 Corinthians 13. Here's what it looks like. And he gives us a list beginning in verse 4. It suffers long. It's kind. It does not envy. It doesn't parade itself. It's not puffed up. It doesn't behave rudely. He's telling us what that looks like. And just as Christ loved us with a sacrificial love, we ought to have the love of Christ in our hearts to, to show forth that type of character or that characteristic in our lives as well. It is, it is now part of our DNA uh, that we live out Christ. When we live out love, really what we're talking about is living out Christ, you know, putting Christ on display in our lives by the way we talk, act, respond to those around us. And the only way that can happen is if Christ is in your heart and your life, I can try all I want. And I may do good on a couple of these for some time, but every once in a while I'm going to mess up. And I still mess up. But it's not because I'm, I'm, I'm trying. No, it's just part of me now. I am a Christian. I am a believer. I'm a follower of Christ. And I look at God's Word. I read God's Word. And the more I read God's Word, what's going into my life is also going to come out of my life. And Christ is in my life, and He's on display in my life. And one of the things that ought to be on display in your life and mine as Christians, as the church, is the love of God. The love of God. Uh, in John chapter 4, and verse 10, it says, Herein is love. 
Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, to take our place, to be the settlement of the payment that was due because of our sins. Almost every context that you read uh, where it talks about God and love or Christ and love, it's a sacrificial love. So what does it look like? He tells us, beginning in verse 4, he says, uh, love is uh, willing to give for the good of others and not, necessarily, not, not be selfish. I'm doing this because it's good for you, and it may be sacrifice on my part, but I'm going to give it. That's an agape love. It's a sacrificial love. It's a spiritual, something deep within. It's not something that we can, we can muster up within our own heart and soul. It's something that is just, just comes out of us. Um, it's wholeheartedly. It's unselfish. It's sacrificial. And the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice uh, as far as sacrificial love would be uh, the cross. Where Christ died on the cross for your sin and my sin. It's the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice. Aren't you grateful that he died for you? Aren't you grateful that he paid the debt that you and I could not pay, would never be able to pay? He loved us with the agape, the sacrificial love. Love. If we have that love of Christ in our lives, it, it is compelled to be exhibited throughout all the world. It just comes out of us. It oozes out of us. And we can't help it. Listen, you know what? We're to love. We're to love. We're to display this love toward others, even if we don't feel like it. Well, I don't, it doesn't matter. We're to love even if they don't even deserve it. It doesn't matter. We're to love even if they haven't earned it. They have proven themselves. Do you know what I just did? I just described you and me. We've not earned it. We don't deserve it. And really, no one even should feel like paying attention to us. Because we're, we're just sinners. You know, we were lost sinners wandering in the darkness. We're trying to find our way. But Christ loved us so much, he gave himself for us that we might have eternal life, that we might experience that love. And through that love, and that love, it, 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 it now indwells us, it lives within us, and it oozes out of us. And it's a divine love. It's spiritual love. It's a supernatural love. It's a sacrificial love. And you know, this love that I'm talking about, it's we're commanded to do that. He says in Matthew chapter 22, beginning in verse 37. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. One of the, one of the characteristics of it says it, 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 it doesn't love itself. You know, he, he, he's not selfish. Um, and another thing about this love, not only are we commanded, but love is eternal. As I mentioned earlier, all things are going to pass away. But this is one thing that's not going to pass away. And that's the love that you and I have experienced from the Father. Another thing, though, this love, you and I have this love in our hearts. It's proof of our relationship with God. I mentioned earlier, just kind of in, in passing at the beginning. But it's John 13, 35. By this will all men know that you are my disciples. How? How? If you have love one toward another. And it's not just, oh, I love you, man. I love you, man. No, it's a, it's a spiritual. It's a, it's a deep, convicting love. It's a sacrificial love. It's an unselfish love. It's behaving right and recognizing right and wrong and responding to it and speaking truth one to another. Love is the prescription also for a happy home. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, I love to give everybody a hug or a kiss or sensual or anything like that. I'm talking about a deep, abiding love in your heart. It is the prescription for a happy home. You have the love of God in your heart. You got more of an opportunity to have a home like nobody else has because you have the love of Christ. And remember now, it's not a sensual love. It's not a fleshly love. It's not a, a brotherly love. It's a deep, in-your-heart, 
something that we can't even explain. But I know this. Once I gave my heart to Christ, now that I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I think that it ought to be something that is evident in your life and mine as well. It's the prescription for a happy home. And love is, um, is to be on display in my life every day of my life. You have days that are up, days that are down. You have days that are mediocre. Today outside it's raining, kind of cold. But uh, in my heart and in your heart, if you have the Lord, if you have Jesus in your life, you also can experience the love of God. And um, I think they ought to be on display. Hey, uh, let me let me just go through this uh, list again. He says, here's what it looks like. Here, here it is on display. Here's what love looks like. Love suffers long. It's kind. It does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It doesn't behave rudely. It does not seek its own. He is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. You know, I, I know people who live for themselves. I mean, they are just trying to get all they can and can all they get. They just love themselves. And they've got this dream. And they call it the American dream. Uh, but uh, really... A lot of those dreams turn into nightmares because they're chasing something. Here's something we ought to be chasing. We ought to be chasing Jesus. Chase after him. And this is what's going to come out of our life. And you know, God may fulfill every dream you ever had. But let's get our priorities right. Let's love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And let's not try to parade ourselves. But let's parade Jesus. Let's put him out there. And it should be something that's just natural for us. Love never fails. The last verse of this chapter says, And now abides faith, hope, love, these three. But the, the greatest of these is love. I hope and pray you have a good evening, a good day uh, uh, tomorrow, the rest of the week. Hope if, you, if you're uh, on Sunday that you either tune in on your computer uh, at 9 and 10.30. Uh, our services are live streamed. Um, also, we have those services here at the church at 9 and 10.30. Um, and then we also have a radio transmission, and, and you can listen to that in our parking lot. So whichever way you choose, I hope that you'll tune in and be with us this coming Sunday, Father's Day. Of all days, Father's Day, and I hope and pray that you have a blessed rest of the week. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the day, and I thank you for this, this book of the Bible on love. Uh, well, every page of the Bible, Lord, is marked with love, the love of God, and I thank you for it. I ask God that you watch over us, meet our needs. I pray, Lord, asking that we will display Christ in our hearts and our lives. And Lord, let that display be to the honor and glory of your son, Jesus. And I pray that it, it will draw others to desire to worship him, to have him in their hearts as well. Watch over us. Bless our homes. Help us during this difficult time in which we live. Give us wisdom. Give us eyes to see, discernment. And God, I pray that we'll be people of faith. We hear him from your word and we respond, believing it and responding to it in a way that's pleasing to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.